maybe ask each of you to give uh, one anecdote of uh, a good business uh, owner who has used your media on the freeway, whether it's submit an opinion, a blog, a story, an update, that wasn't over promotional in a clever sort of subtle way. Um, well, I, I think, um, like I said, I think you need to speak to your expertise in the subject that you're talking about without, I mean, even the real estate um, bloggers I have, they talk about the market in general. They don't necessarily talk about what their company does in relation to the market, but they talk about what's going on in the market in, in relation to you know, potentially buying a house or, um, or trying to sell one. Um, and similarly with uh, like a, a health coach, um, she'll talk about eating habits, um, you know, uh, different types of food, or if you're on a gluten-free diet or whatever you know, your particular um, specialty is, and stay specific to that type of topic rather than saying, this is what I do and this is what my company can do for you. I mean, I do allow them to, you know, obviously, leave the link for their website so that people can go to their website from their blog, which I think is a great, you know, again, a great compliment. And that way, they, if they really are interested and want to get more information on that particular person, they have the opportunity to do that. I have the business announcement section. Um, this week, we have a column from one of the financial advisors who's a sponsor on Gazebo News. It's actually written by somebody at um, Edward Jones, one of the marketing people. So it's vetted by his company. They have a lot of levels of approval process. So he, get, he has access to that material. Um, and once a month, he sends me his column. I put it up with his picture and his phone number. Um, if you're involved in some kind of civic nonprofit, that's a good way. I'll cover that. I don't really like, and if you have a, an event or an anniversary, I'll do stories about that. Um, uh, we have a uh, columnist, Bob Guiriano, who often covers local businesses. He's a executive search firm owner here in Lake Forest, so he would be a good person to contact. Uh, Julie Morse, a realtor in town, writes Realty Insights. She's always happy to hear any re uh, realtor news you may have. Also, uh, my email address is dsweet at pioneerlocal.com, and I often can put items from a business into our newsmakers section or news brief section. For instance, uh, if you have a record year in revenue or if you have some new hires or if you have a 75th anniversary coming up, all that sort of information is of interest to us. Uh, I work with a lot of political campaigns. Could you talk a little bit for each of your <coughs> publications about what your policies are in regard to submissions from um, candidates or from their campaigns? Well, I don't do a lot on political campaigns. I'm a very small operation, and if I endorsed someone, I would lose half of my readers and half of my advertisers. So I will let you take it. <laughs> I would just say, uh, Adrian mentioned endorsements. We used to endorse candidates. Uh, it was a decision of sometimes media not to endorse candidates anymore, just so people know that. Uh, on the other side, I mean, we cover races, we cover primaries, and we'll cover the no November elections and so forth. Uh, press releases from candidates, if it sounds newsworthy, we'll run something on it, often a news brief, nothing more than that. But to be honest, a lot of what we re receive from the politicians, and I have one who sends me an item every day, it's obviously self-promotional and often mm -hmm. just not of general interest. And the League of Women Voters, they do a lot of work, which you actually, I think, are involved with. Political and nonpartisan. Right, but I mean, they, they interview the candidates. I've put the links to their videos up because that's, that's just their information that's going straight out. Um, and that's so. valuable. That's, that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. One thing we do offer, we have been doing since this past spring when they uh, primaries and stuff, is uh, we have offered candidates opportunity to blog on our site if they want to. Um, so, and then some have taken advantage of it, some haven't. Um, it's, again, it's probably just a, either a function of time or, uh, but it's again, it's a complimentary uh, opportunity for them to use our platform to espouse their views. Um, um, beyond that, you know, like I, I think I agree with what they said, most of the stuff I receive generally have, you know, tends to be more self-promotional, so we kind of shy away from that. We also don't endorse uh, candidates either um, we're just recover the races and you know, treat it strictly as a news story. So. Thank you. Yeah. 
a quick question for you, Jim. Is, is it possible for those of us with businesses or activities and more, more than this community to subscribe to a past edition in another community where we don't live? Yes. Um, all you have to do is go on their particular site and register. Mm -hmm. And once you register, it'll ask you if you want to receive you know, the daily email and breaking news alerts, things like that. And you'll get that one as well. So uh, um, yeah, you can subscribe to a, another site, certainly. Yes. Um, I, for all three of your online presence, I know that with us, we generally send an event monthly, you know, and that that event will be then on the calendar. Is there um, a good forum or a good space on each of your websites that would specifically promote in advance an event that we have coming up, especially like where we have the art fair that involves pretty much the entire community? Well, I always do a save the date that goes out in the headlines if anybody asks. You have to give it to me to do, though, because I won't know about it. And then we have the event calendars that um, come up. And usually, if anybody asks me to do something the week of, I'll do a headline and a paragraph or two saying, don't forget this is going on this week, especially if there's a great piece of art, which you have in abundance. So that always helps. <laughs> Uh, art fi fair on the square, that's something we'd probably write a story about uh, the week before. Uh, we'd also put it in, a, in, a, sorry, in an event calendar. And uh, if it's in a story on our site, it would also go out on our email newsletter too. Is that something we should send to you? you? Send to me, and I'll forward it to someone else if necessary. And I would say um, if you post the event on our, on our calendar, I would, one thing I would definitely do is there's a checkbox that says feature this click on that because what it does is when people open our calendar your event will come up among the others that are featured if you don't feature it it won't so that's it's a definitely a good thing to do um, it, it brings your event up front versus being amongst several thank you all so much thank you all so much thank you thank you to our speakers